Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be discussing why we use the midpoint of our variable changes when we use our arc elasticity formula. And really just up front, the take home message is that by using the midpoint of our variable changes, our elasticities are not sensitive to the direction of the changes in the variables. So what I'm going to do in this video is just go through an example which demonstrates exactly this. So let's just say that we're working with our arc elasticity of demand. And let's say that we're evaluating our elasticity as we move from a price of $2, where six units are demanded, to a price of $4, where four units are demanded. So first off, I'm just going to apply our arc elasticity of demand formula. And I have this here. We have the change in Q divided by the change in P, all multiplied by the midpoint of our price change over the midpoint of our quantity change. So we can find all of those components just from our graph here. Our change in quantity is negative two. Our change in price is two. The midpoint of our quantity change, that's just the middle number between four and six, so that's five. And the midpoint of our price change is three. So the middle point between two and four. Once I substitute all these values in, I get negative three over five. And I'm going to interpret this as, well, in this section of our demand curve, our elasticity of demand in this section is negative three over five. Okay, so to see why it's the case that we use the midpoint here, let's think about alternative figures that we might have used instead of the midpoints. Well, a natural and probably very good suggestion is why don't we use the first or initial price P1 and quantity Q1, so our um, the initial point of our variables. And if we did that, our elasticity would come out a little differently. And so let's go through that here. Let's call our revised elasticity epsilon d prime. And we're going to use the same formula as before, except we're not going to use the midpoints. We're just going to use P1 and Q1. Well, our change in price and quantity is going to be exactly the same as before, but we're just going to use our initial price P12 and our initial quantity Q1, which is equal to six. So our elasticity comes out at negative a third. And we can interpret this in, in a similar kind of sense. We can say, um, given this discrete change in our variables, our elasticity of demand is going to be negative a third. So the problem here is that if we go ahead and if we decide that this is how we're going to define our arc elasticities, and we're going to use the initial values instead of the midpoints, then the direction of the variable changes begins to make a difference to our elasticity calculations. So remember that our calculation so far has been on the basis of an increase in the price from two to four dollars, which has led to a decrease in the quantity demanded. So what I'm going to think of, what happens if we work with the same region of the demand curve, but we're going to evaluate a decrease in the price from four to two dollars. And this essentially means that we're swapping the positions of P1, P2, Q1, and Q2. So we're decreasing the price from four to two, which gives us an increase in the quantity from four to six. If we worked out our elasticity then, again, just using our first or initial price, and let's call this epsilon d prime prime, well, our change in quantity is now positive, and our change in price is negative, and our P1 is four, and our Q1 is four. And so this leaves us with an overall elasticity of negative one. So as you can see, evaluating the elasticity in this region of the demand curve when the price is increasing, well, that gave us an elasticity of negative third. But when we looked at the same region of the demand curve, but just a decrease in price, so from four to two, our elasticity has, has come back as negative one. And so here you can, you can see that there's kind of two different types of problems associated with this. The first is a kind of consistency problem. We're using the same method and looking at the same region of the demand curve, but coming out with two different values for our elasticity. So typically economists have not liked this. They think that if we look at just a region of the demand curve, it should kind of unambiguously be associated with just one value of the elasticity. The second factor is that by using the initial or first value, that the direction of the price or variable change has started to affect the value of the elasticity. So elasticity itself has traditionally just been a measure of responsiveness and hasn't really said or hasn't commented on the direction of the change 
being kind of an important factor in that responsiveness. And the response has been, well, we need to find a value that doesn't change when we change the direction of the variable change. So it's going to remain the same irregardless of whether we're increasing or decreasing uh, between two different points. And so the midpoint does exactly that. The midpoint doesn't change whether we're increasing or decreasing between, in this case, prices two and, price, and, and prices four. And so what that means is that our elasticity is going to be exactly the same in both cases. Okay, so that's it. I hope you guys uh, found that useful. Please like and subscribe. Please have a look at my channel and my other videos. I hope you guys are having fun studying economics.